consequently, God told Elijah, you tell Ahab that it's not going to rain for three and a half years. And it didn't. No rain in Israel for three and one half years. Elijah went into hiding. Everybody looked for him. Nobody knew where he was because he was the one that had control of the water spigot. Uh, consequently, finally, God said to Ahab, uh, to, to Elijah, go show yourself to Ahab. We now pick it up where he's going to show himself to Ahab. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, which is here, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which sat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Then, I'm not going to read the entire thing, but he said, now whoever answers by fire, he's the one that will be God. So he had the prophets of Baal, and the prophets of the groves go first. They offered a sacrifice, they danced around it, they even cut themselves trying to get Baal to send fire from heaven. All day long it didn't work. In the meantime, Elijah goaded them a little bit about their false religion. He said, well maybe your God's on a vacation right now. Or maybe he's taking a nap. Or perhaps he's on a journey. Uh, finally he said, okay, enough, you've had enough time. And he backed had them back off. He built an altar with 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel. He put a sacrifice on the altar. He dug a trench around the altar. He said, now bring me three barrels of water. Three barrels of water. This really is a salvation issue because they shed the blood first, offered the sacrifice, then they baptized it, and then the, the outpouring of, of the fire is, a, is symbolic of repentance, baptism, and the infill of the Holy Ghost. So anyway, he brought three barrels of water, poured it on the sacrifice. Now, he's planning on God burning this sacrifice up, and here he is dampening it down to make sure God can really do it, that it's not some kind of an easy trick. He brings another three barrels, another three, three barrels. He finally ends up with 12 barrels of water. And then he backs off and says, Now, Lord God of Elijah, Lord God, let the fire fall so that Israel may know that you and you alone are God. And the fire fell from heaven. It licked up all the water. It consumed the sacrifice. And I believe the scripture even says it burnt up the stones. So consequently, people began to shout. All of Israel was gathered together there. The Lord, he is God. The story doesn't stop there, though. Because Elijah then said, Now do not let any of the prophets of Baal escape. He took them down to the river uh, down below, and there he cut off the heads of all the false prophets. Elijah was not, he really wasn't just a clergyman. He was some kind of a man of God. Uh, he was purging the land of their false uh, religion, of their idolatry, and so that happened here at this particular place. Now there's a lot more to the story. We're not gonna take time to, to do that right now, but we can go on up and we can see uh, the brook where uh, Elijah actually killed the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 and the prophets of the rose. Kishon. Kishon. Yeah, brook Kishon.